Well, hello. Welcome back. Today, we are going to be doing a bit of a, a bit of a new series. Two out of three of my most popular videos are videos of cars under $3,000. So that must be like your guys' happy little gray area. So I'm going to be doing a series on a bunch of different kinds of cars for under $3,000. And today we're going to be starting with rear wheel drive cars for under $3,000 since I think those are the most desirable kind of car, at least for me. I love rear wheel drive. If a car comes rear wheel drive, you might as well sign me up because I'm going to buy it. Anyway, guys, let's get right into it. Number 10 is the Volvo 240, which comes with a 2.3 liter inline four, making 114 horsepower. And it was a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a, a little bit of a grandma's car, but it's an absolute send mobile. I mean, you freaking weld that diff and you're the next Adam LZ. It also had that very classy retro like styling to it, which when done right, could look better than most cars on the road today. I said it. I think these older like style cars that are kind of boxy and uh, you know, they don't really like, you know, they don't really like hold up with today's like curvy lines. I think they're awesome. And especially when people do them correctly, they lower them, make the paint look nice and put some nice wheels on them. They look so freaking great. It's like a trip to the past. And other people like that too, not just car guys. Just be ready because people will make fun of the car since it is just like a box of Captain Crunch, but on wheels. But if you can get past that, it's a great car. Number nine is the fourth generation Chevy Camaro, which comes with a five liter V8, making 300 horsepower on the dot. And yes, that does sound very good for this list. And that's because it kind of is. Uh, it, it is possible to find a fourth gen Camaro for under $3,000. As a matter of fact, the fourth gen Camaro is one of the best budget bang for your buck kind of cars out there. You can find them for under 2K. But unfortunately the fourth generation camaro is like the ultimate crackhead mobile for some reason i mean when you buy one of these cars you have to watch out because there are going to be freaking needles in the car there are going to be just disgusting bugs that you you're going to be discovering new species of bacteria in the car the car is going to be a mess it's going to be a hunk of junk but besides that, it has very good amounts of horsepower and actually looks really cool, especially for the time it was made. It's an 80s car and it holds up to the time. It's easily one of the least desirable Camaros out there, but that is actually a good thing if you think about it. Number eight is the first generation Toyota MR2, Mr. 2, and it came with a 1.6 liter inline four that made only 112 horsepower, which is even slower than the Volvo 240, but it was extremely lightweight and also mid engine. So just be careful because it does have that good old snap oversteer. It's very, very, very badly in this car. As a matter of fact, it's a huge problem in these cars. You definitely want to look into it if you're thinking about buying one. Do not buy one without knowing about snap oversteer because it will bite you in the butt cheeks and you might die. All right. And I don't want to see you dead. I love you. And I would hate to go to your funeral. Uh, the looks on these cars are freaking timeless and the aftermarket support. Yes, it is pretty small, but the ones that you do get for the car are very nice and they work and they look really cool. Also, if you do buy one with problems, I'm not saying if you buy one, you know, just, oh, that's okay. But if you do decide to buy one with problems, be ready to not drive it for a freaking year since they are a pain to work on and they're mid engine and you're not going to have fun with that. Number seven is the Mazda Miata NB, which stands for New Balances, and it came with a 1.8 liter inline four that makes only 135 horsepower, but it's also, once again, extremely freaking lightweight. It's pretty much a better Toyota MR2. I said it. I'm not going back on it. It was freaking cute. Also, uh, just like the MR2, it was low power, but lightweight was the I, kind of idea that they were going for behind this. So if you're looking for a straight line speed monster, this is a God awful choice. But if you're looking for a Canyon Carver or a drift car, this is a great choice. Now, I know you guys want the NA Miatas, but unfortunately, the market for the NA Miatas right now is absolutely just abysmal. I don't even want to look at NA Miatas right now because it makes me sick to my stomach that some guy thinks that he can get sick six grand out of his Miata with 190,000 miles on it. You are crazy, sir. No one's going to pay that kind of money. I don't care if it's manual. There's hundreds of Miatas driving around. You know how many Miatas I see every day? Number six is the Ford Crown Vic, which comes with a 4.6 liter V8, making 250 horsepower if you went with the police interceptor one, which was a way better option since not only are they faster, but actually they are cheaper since what happened was the police moved on to the next best thing, the Taurus that we all know and love today, yippee, and the Expedition, or is it the Explorer? I don't know if it's the Explorer or the Expedition, but you know the SUV one. And 
they didn't really need these cars anymore so they brought them to freaking auction and people started picking them up for a thousand dollars and then selling them and thinking that they were going to make profit but really they realized uh oh everybody else is doing the same thing so we can only sell them for 1500 you can buy these cars for unbelievably dirt cheap also the community behind these cars has each other's freaking backs through thick and thin they help each other out whenever they need it and honestly it's probably because there isn't really much of them so they don't want to lose anybody but still it's awesome to have them there Number five is the Mazda RX-8, which came with a 1.3 liter two rotor rotary engine that made 232 horsepower and it had problems out the freaking wazoo. If you do not have good mechanical knowledge, this is probably a very, 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 very bad choice since they are extremely difficult to work on and they break a lot. So you're going to have to work on them. But if you do have the mechanical experience, then they are a bunch of fun and they make all the cool freaking rotary noises that we all love. I mean, rotaries, as we all know, it just sounds so freaking good. And this car is no exception. They're just, oh, they're, they sound amazing. On top of that, I personally don't really like the looks too much on these cars, but I know that for a fact that there are hundreds of people out there that love the looks. That's mine is kind of an unpopular opinion. But I do like that they have this one cool feature where like when you open up the doors, they open up like truck doors. And I think that's awesome. Number four is the Lexus LS400 coming with a four liter V8 making 290 horsepower and it was a freaking baller mobile man. Yes, I know your grandma probably owned one but your grandma just had good taste, okay? Grandmas can be cool too and your grandma if she was whipping around an LS400 is a freaking cool grandma and I wanna get to know her. Let's go play, bit. let me ask, let me go play bingo with her, all right man? Anyway, these cars came with everything you could possibly want in a car, a Japanese V8. Good looks and rear wheel drive what more could you ask for well i have one thing that you could ask for a may a manual transmission which unfortunately these cars didn't come with but i know everybody always talks bad about cars that don't come with manual transmissions but guys it's actually pretty cheap if you just buy a car that's automatic and swap it over to a manual transmission the work is going to be a pain in the balls but the actual cost for it isn't as bad as you would think unless you're swapping in like a freaking supra freaking manual transmission that's going to be expensive but not an ls400 Third place is the Ford Mustang SN95 coming with a 4.6 liter V8 making 215 horsepower and they are another huge crackhead mobile just like the fourth generation Chevy Camaro. People, pe like people are just, the ones that you know, you know who I'm talking about. The ones that are just gross and they just like, they, they stand by Dollar Trees all day and they're just, you know, they're, they're those kind of guys. They, they tend to find these very, very cheap muscle cars and think it's going to win over the other like freaking disgusting you know so they buy them and just turn them into these little garbage cans of cars literally driving garbage cans and it's actually disgusting but if you can get yourself by that and you want to save these poor little things then you can and you will find that you will have a blast in one of these cars if you make this car back up to where it was supposed to be it's amazing there's a reason why everyone chooses mustangs when trying to find their first cool car Second place is the BMW 328i E46, which came with a 2.8 liter inline six, making 193 horsepower. And they are absolute legends when it comes to drifting and for first cars all around the globe. I know like four people that have a BMW E46 as their first car and they don't even like cars. They just got it because their parents gave it to them. It is no surprise that BMW makes some mean freaking machines. And when talking about the E46 generation, it's like they just, it's like they just didn't fail anywhere. Every single one of them, the 328i, the 325i, the 330ci, they're all almost perfect, especially for drifting. Just about anything else, it tries its best. I mean, racing, it tries its best. Daily driving, it tries its best. But for drifting, it tries its best and gives its best. It's just like, wow, we're there. Um, for daily driving, by the way, parts aren't actually as expensive as you would think anymore since there's a lot of these cars were made and they're kind of getting old now anyway. First place though is easily the Infiniti G35 sedan, which comes with the famous 3.5 liter V6 that makes 287 horsepower called the VQ35DE. And guys, I know you are gonna hate me for putting this as number one since I own a VQ car, 
but I do think it's the best choice. It is the same engine that you can find in the highly sought after 350Z, except it has four doors and four seats. It's an absolute drift missile of a car. People drift them everywhere they go. And on top of that, the VQ35DE engine is extremely reliable, despite what you may think. The only reason why VQs aren't reliable is because people beat on them. Everybody that owns a VQ car is drifting it or slamming it into walls, and that's going to make the engine unreliable, obviously. Yes, the looks aren't all there for the sedan g35s but you're paying for a good performing engine whether it be for the reliability or for the racing purposes also since they don't look that good you can even find a g35 for under 2k which is just mind-blowing if you ever wanted a 350z but you're looking at the market right now and you're like wow this guy wants 10 grand for his 150,000 150 mile 350z and it's an automatic what is this guy smoking buy yourself a g35 sedan instead but you guys that is the end of this list i hope you guys enjoyed and i hope you guys are going to enjoy this whole series that i have going on obviously we have front wheel drive cars we have all wheel drive cars we got coupes we got sedans we got wagons trucks suvs crossovers hatchbacks i could do anything that you want for under three thousand dollars for some reason you guys just seem to love the three thousand dollar mark and it makes sense when i was given my first car i was given the exact profit of three thousand dollars so you probably are also getting that exact profit line it makes freaking sense you guys are probably all you know high schoolers looking for their first car and i'm here to help all right that's all i'm here to help all i ask is that you please subscribe to the channel i gave you 10 cars you just got to give me a little subscribe that's all i ask you know maybe maybe like the video too if you're feeling generous just get Boop, boop. you know just maybe a little boop boop thanks mark boop. thank you i'll be like you're welcome you are more than welcome i'll keep doing them i love you guys so much thank you guys so much for everything you have done for me over this past year we got 6700 subscribers closing in on 7000 can't wait to be there but anyway thank you guys so much for watching das vidanya and out